roughly seven hours. It's how much the Dalai Lama meditates each day. From this piece of information, it's not unreasonable to assume that for the Dalai Lama, meditation is an activity really important given how much time he spends doing this practice. This is what you would expect from a religious person, given that for thousands of years meditation was mostly practiced by monks or religious devotees seeking enlightenment. But in recent years, there's been a surge of interest and it's now practiced by millions of people worldwide, religious and non-religious alike. Along with this interest, a vast amount of information regarding the effects of mindfulness on the brain and body emerged. But he insisted meditation changed his life. Meditation can improve someone's physical and mental health. Compassion-based meditation can directly improve stress, anxiety, and loneliness even after just 20 minutes of practice. With many bold claims being made on the internet about how mindfulness is a cure-all for many modern ills. Dr. Deepak Chopra is addressing anxiety through meditation. From stress and pain to depression, making researchers concerned that these claims will mislead people and keep them from receiving evidence-based treatment. We're going to look at the growing body of scientific research and discuss the real changes meditation has on your brain and body, if it has any, and also if it's worth incorporating this more and more popular practice into your daily life. But before we start, we should mention that almost all of the studies used in this video were randomized controlled trials, which are considered to be the gold standard for testing the efficacy of new interventions. Imagine you have two groups of people who are sick. One group gets a new medicine, and the other group doesn't get the medicine or gets a fake medicine called a placebo. After a while, the scientists look at both groups to see who got better. By comparing the two groups, they can tell if the new medicine actually helped the people who took it or not. With this understanding, we can now delve into the findings from such studies to see whether meditation has indeed any real effects or not. It seems that when you challenge your brain to meditate, not only it gets better at meditation, making meditating easier and more effortless, like your brain does with all activities that you practice regularly, but also your brain gets better at a multitude of stuff. One very important thing that seems to improve is self-regulation, a concept similar to self-control that refers to the ability to control one's behavior, emotions, and thoughts in the pursuit of long-term goals. It involves setting goals, monitoring progress towards these goals, and making adjustments as needed to achieve those goals. It also involves managing emotions in order to remain focused and productive. In one study with 80 undergraduates, the participants randomly assigned to the meditation training, where for five days they meditated for 20 minutes, showed greater improvements in self-regulation ability compared with the control group assigned to a relaxation training. In another study, just 11 hours of meditation resulted in visible changes in the brain. In this study, 45 undergraduates were randomized to either a meditation training or a relaxation training of 30 minutes per session over a month period. No brain areas showed any changes for the group assigned to the relaxation training, but the ones assigned to the meditation training showed significant changes in white matter connectivity in a number of brain areas connecting to a part of the brain known to be involved in self-regulation. The study thus suggested that meditation could provide a means for improving self-regulation and perhaps reducing or preventing various mental disorders. Brain changes after a meditation period were also shown in another study, mentioning that after eight weeks of a meditation program, changes in gray matter were found in multiple brain regions involved in learning and memory processes, emotion regulation, self-referential processing, and perspective taking. If you wonder how meditation improves self-regulation, what exactly meditation does that it leads to an improvement in self-regulation, well, we're going to discuss in the following chapters about the factors that led to the improvement of self-regulation. But before we move forward, we should discuss about another similar area where meditation might also help, self-controlled depletion. Self-controlled depletion refers to the idea that after engaging in tasks that require self-control, individuals are more likely to have reduced self-control capacity to engage in subsequent tasks that also require self-control, just like a muscle that becomes exhausted after using it in the gym. In a study investigating the potential of meditation to mitigate self-control depletion, the researchers employed an emotion suppression task to deplete the self-control of 66 participants. The participants were randomly assigned to one of three conditions, a group with an emotion suppression task, a group with no emotion suppression task, and a group with an emotion suppression task plus meditation. 
As hypothesized by the researchers, the group that had an emotion suppression task acted poorly in the following test of self-control compared to the group that had no emotion suppression task, but also poorly than ones that had an emotion suppression task but meditated after it. Interestingly, the participants that meditated after the emotion suppression showed similar performance to those that did not have the emotion suppression task. So maybe if you are tired and still have work to do, meditation might help. We often find ourselves complaining about our inability to focus, and rightly so. Having poor attention can be frustrating and annoying for a number of reasons. It makes it difficult to complete tasks, leading possibly to procrastination and missed deadlines. It can also make it difficult to learn and retain information, as we may struggle to pay attention to important details or concepts. And it can also impact our relationships with others, as we may struggle to stay engaged in conversations. Unfortunately, our brain rewards us for poorly managing our attention, because for our early ancestors, seeking novel threats in the environment aided their chance of survival. Instead of focusing too deeply on stoking a fire to the point where they were not alert to a prowling tiger, early humans were constantly scanning for potential dangers around them. Even if it made them a bit less efficient in attending to the fire, if they survived to see another day, it was worth it. But we are not our ancestors. We live in a different world where controlling our minds has become utterly important, especially with the age of the internet, advertisements, and social media that made our attention weaker than ever before. In many scientific studies, it was shown that meditation improves attention and lessens mind wandering. Take for example a study where volunteers were either assigned to an eight-week program of MBSR or wait to receive the training after the experiment was complete. MBSR is short for Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction and is a meditation practice that consists of a systematic scan of sensations throughout your body, attentive yoga, and awareness of thoughts and feelings. After this eight-week program, the participants who underwent the MBSR training showed a far better ability to focus on sensations than they had done before starting the MBSR training, and better than those who were still waiting for MBSR. A similar finding was found in a study where volunteers attended a three-month meditation retreat where they practiced focusing on their breath for five hours per day. They were tested at the beginning of the retreat, one month into it, at the end, and five months later. The vigilance of the meditators was improved, with the greatest gains in the first month of the retreat, and interestingly, five months after the retreat ended. In a follow-up test of vigilance, the improvement gained during the retreat was still strong. In other studies, mindfulness meditation resulted in improvements in the ability to concentrate and also lessened mind wandering. And given the fact that our mind wanders for approximately 47% of the time, as we discussed in one of our videos talking about hyperfocus, it's a fantastic gain to get. Meditation also seems to improve working memory, a type of memory that is used to store short-term information while performing complex tasks. Used, for example, when solving problems, when writing essays, or when following multi-step directions. This boost in working memory and attention may have led students in a study to have an increase of more than 30% in an entrance exam for grad school. Not that surprising, given how important attention is for memory and learning. Compassion is not something that seems really interesting, especially if you are a man. But it's something really important that should deserve way more attention. Not only will more compassion make our societies better as a whole, but also, as the Dalai Lama has put it, the first person to benefit from compassion is the one who feels it. This statement is backed by science. Multiple studies show that acts of kindness create positive emotions and well-being. Financial generosity, for example, is one of the top six predictors of well-being worldwide. People that spend money on someone else report happier moods than those who spend money on themselves. And even children exhibit more happiness when they help others. So for getting closer to these positive emotions and improving our well-being, compassion seems to be a key step. So, can meditation help? Well, let's examine some studies again. In one randomized controlled trial, the participants were split into two random groups and did two weeks of either compassion meditation, where they had to increase their feelings of compassion towards different kinds of people, or reappraisal training, where the participants had to reinterpret personal stressful events to decrease their negative emotions. Their brain was scanned before and after the two weeks of training, and their brain was also scanned when they viewed images of human suffering. They also played a game where they first witnessed a dictator cheat a victim out of a fair share of $10, giving just $1 instead. 
The game then lets the volunteers give up to $5 of their own money to the victim. The participants who did the compassion meditation gave almost two times as much to the victim than the control group. Those participants who had learned to reinterpret stressful events. Also, the brain of the compassion trained group showed increased activation in circuits for attention, perspective taking, and positive feelings. The more of this activation, the more altruistic. Another study found that just seven minutes of loving kindness meditation boosts a person's good feelings and sense of social connection, though this might be just a temporary feeling. Another study found that people who did a total of two and a half hours of compassion meditation made them feel more relaxed and donated to charity at a higher rate than those in a comparison group who did a proportionate amount of light exercise. A brain circuit for caretaking, which we share with all other mammals, grows stronger even with short periods of compassion training. And a larger right-side amygdala has been observed in brain scans of extraordinary altruists compared to other people of their age and gender. Loving-kindness meditation also boosts the connections between the brain circuits for joy and happiness and the prefrontal cortex, a zone vital for guiding behavior. The greater the increase in the connection between these regions, the more altruistic a person becomes following the compassion meditation training. If you care even a little bit about your productivity, your sleep, or your health and your lifespan, then you should really care about how stressed you are. Stress not only undermines your productivity, but also your health and the joys in life. Therefore, the question we ask ourselves again, can meditation help? In an early study of the impact of MBSR on stress reactivity involving a small group of patients with social anxiety disorder who underwent eight weeks of MBSR program, was found that people that meditated by focusing on their breath while they were presented with stressors experienced less negative emotions and had lowered activity in the amygdala compared to the participants that had to distract themselves with mental arithmetic, like counting backwards from 168. The same beneficial pattern emerged when the participants who had done MBSR were compared with others who had trained in aerobics. A similar study that stimulated a really stressful job interview found that the more hours the participants had practiced meditation, the quicker their blood pressure recovered from the interview. And impressively, this was still true five months after the study ended. In one of a few longitudinal studies, meditation led to a wide range of improvements on the participants of the study. From less anxiety to an overall sense of well-being and a quicker recovery from upsetting events, these improvements came after three months training. And remarkably, these improvements remained even after five months from the moment that training ended. Meditation also seems to have a pain-reducing effect on people. For example, in a study analyzing this effect in elderly people, meditation showed improvements in reducing how much pain people felt and how disabled they became as a result compared to a control group that took part in a health education program. Also, their lowered pain levels lasted into a six-month follow-up. Another meta-analysis study investigating these effects of meditation and lowering chronic pain noted that mindfulness-based interventions, while not superior to traditional cognitive behavioral treatments, can be good alternatives. But as was shown in all studies so far, these reduced pain levels came from how people relate to their pain, not from removing the biological cause of the pain. An important distinction. Now, there may be some questions that you may have, like what can you expect from meditating if you just start the practice now? If you have only a few total hours of meditation, it's very likely that most of the benefits we talked about in the video won't be visible outside of the meditative state. For instance, when it comes to stress recovery, the evidence for benefits in the few months of daily practice are more subjective than objective. On the other hand, the amygdala, a key node in the brain's stress circuitry, shows lessened reactivity after 30 or so hours over eight weeks of MBSR practice. Compassion meditation shows stronger benefits from the beginning, with as few as seven total hours over the course of two weeks, leads to an increased connectivity in circuits important for empathy and positive feelings, strong enough to show up outside the meditation state. But if you keep a consistent meditation practice over a long time, you can expect all the benefits we talked about in this video to show up in your daily life outside of the meditation state. For instance, the meditators with a range of lifetime hours, ranging from 1,000 to 10,000 hours, have neural and hormonal indicators of lessened stress reactivity. Additionally, functional connectivity in the brain in a circuit important for emotion regulation is strengthened, and cortisol, a key hormone secreted by the adrenal gland in response to stress, lessens. The important thing to remember is that with each thing that improves, other improvements follow. For instance, an improvement in attention brings improvements in other things, like memory, productivity, 
learning, and so on. The same goes for the other benefits we talked about, like lowering stress helps your health, but also your sleep, which is vital for many things, like health, attention, mood, and so on. However, while research has shown that meditation can have numerous benefits, it remains unclear whether all these benefits can be achieved through mobile apps or meditation retreats in nature, and the specific benefits associated with each type of meditation. Nonetheless, the benefits seem to be pretty similar across the different types of meditation. But like with any habit, it's important to be consistent with it. And if you find it difficult to meditate and be consistent, maybe you haven't found a meditation practice that works for you. So experiment with many practices until you find one that best fits you. And remember that it will get easier over time. The last thing we want to mention is that most meditation practices help you live more in the present. And this effect can't really be quantified by science and studies. Even when we are awake, we are no different from a sleepwalker. We do things without the awareness of doing them. Just because our eyes are open does not mean we are awake. So, can you really experience the present moment if you're not aware of it? Can you really say that you're living life if you're not aware that you were doing so?